Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. Being in the energy industry, I have a great love for all things involving electricity and electrical generation. As such, I've become a bit of a connoisseur of consumer-level renewable energy bullshit. So when I came across this video by Bloomberg, no less, I could not pass it up. We're on the side of the highway, about 20 miles outside of Reykjavik. You can see this little guy spinning around all day, powering telecommunications equipment. Back in downtown Reykjavik, there's smaller versions of this sitting on top of a bus stop. They're powering a Wi-Fi base station, an advertising board, and a smartphone recharging station. In an industrial suburb on the edge of Reykjavik, a company called Icewind has set up shop in an abandoned coal power plant. Okay, so this is something I've seen before with these soft news renewable energy reports. They try to juxtapose the new hip renewable against the old dirty monster of traditional energy. This time they show that they set up in an old abandoned coal power plant. However, once you really look into what they are building, these guys could have just as easily set up in their garage. To build these turbines by hand. It's run by Thor, the company's business chief, and C. Thor, a former nuclear engineer. This type of turbine is called the seven years vertical axis wind turbine. In case you missed it, that would be a Savonius vertical access wind turbine for all you turbine noobs out there. Which apparently includes the interviewer, the editor, the rest of the production team at Bloomberg, and the Icelandic government. But more on that later. We have taken this base design and kind of brought it to the modern age with modern materials, carbon fiber, stainless steel. So how exactly did they bring it into the modern age? by making them out of carbon fiber and stainless steel. So they took a shitty design for a wind turbine, made the design even shittier, and made it out of stainless steel and carbon fiber. But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's look at the Savonius wind turbine. This style of wind turbine was invented by Sigurd Savonius in 1922, but the concept behind this type of wind machine has been around for much longer than that, but somehow he managed to get his name attached to it. The Savonius is a drag-style turbine as opposed to the lift-style turbines that look more like propellers. The fundamental problem with these turbines is that they are very inefficient, which is why no company serious about energy production uses them. Let me show you why. In an oversimplified description, when the wind hits the scoop part of the turbine, it pushes against that part of the blade and causes the turbine to spin. However, the wind is not only pushing against that part of the turbine, it is also pushing against the back part of the other blades, which is why it is always less efficient than similarly sized lift type turbines, because it is always fighting against the exact same wind that is driving it. And then there's this problem. This is a mock-up I made of the profile of their blade against the profile of a traditional Savonius turbine. There seems to be something missing on their turbine. Like, half of the fucking turbine. So they took a design that was already not very efficient and made it so that it is missing 40% of its ability to catch wind. This triangular profile means that it loses a significant amount of surface area for the wind to push against. So it is even less efficient than a traditional style Savonius wind turbine. We've made it really, really strong. We have engineered and cut the plates so that the turbine never goes on overspin. And uh, we just done the system so it's really, really simple. And therefore we can keep the price down, but it also can take really, really harsh weather. And weather is a serious problem. This is what can happen to a conventional wind turbine when excessive wind speeds hit. Bullshit. That is not a turbine in overspeed. That's a turbine on fire. I would think if they are going to talk about turbines going into overspeed, they could at least find footage of a turbine in overspeed. This, by the way, is a turbine in overspeed. As you can see, the potential damage caused by a turbine overspeed can be quite catastrophic, which is why there are several mechanisms in place to make sure that the large utility scale turbines don't go into overspeed. A situation like the footage I just showed means that there were multiple systems failures that allowed that to happen. 
All wind turbines are in some way designed to prevent overspeed. The largest utility scale turbines have the ability to twist or pitch their blades so that the wind will pass over both sides of the blades causing it to not spin, such in the footage that I'm showing. Even smaller turbines can yaw or twist the nacelle so that the blades are no longer being directly affected by the wind. Utility scale turbines are able to do this as well, but they primarily rely upon the pitching of the blades. In fact, the only turbine that doesn't seem to have any way to actually stop from spinning in the wind are these ones, because their blades are always being presented to the wind no matter what direction the wind is blowing from. The shape of the ice wind turbines allows them to function in low wind and to stop from spinning out of control in high wind. This is a claim that they make on this video and they seem to make a big deal of it, but it must be a claim that the company has actually backed off of because when I go to their website it says nothing about how these things are any better at dealing with overspeed than any other type of turbine. Icewind has trials running throughout this country and expects to begin selling its turbines worldwide later this year. So this Bloomberg video was produced in June of 2016. At the time of this recording, it is January of 2017, and according to Icewind's website, there is still no product available yet. Speaking of Icewind's website, they have a very amusing product development chart. Believe it or not, they began designing this in 2008. And if you go from year to year, they have pictures of the different designs for each year that they have continued to change and, and develop this turbine. Very little has changed on it. And it has taken them seven years. And they have yet to be able to produce a viable product to bring to market. Mind you, this is a turbine that I was able to make a 3D model of in about an hour. And I am not an animator. I would guess if I needed to build something similar to this, I could do it in maybe a week tops and have a functional prototype. And here is what blows my mind. December of 2016, Icewind Team is proud to announce that they were just offered a two-year government research grant. A grant to research technology that has been around for decades. That there are readily available formulas that can tell them the exact output that they can expect out of a given size turbine and a given wind speed. There is nothing for them to research, yet governments throw money at these green energy companies because they say, we have something new and innovative. Nobody looks into it. Nobody researches it. Nobody says, hey, isn't this something that was already produced a long, long time ago? So to sum up the ice wind turbine, this is an old, inefficient design redesigned to be less productive than the original design, and yet governments and investors throw money at these things because they tout that they are green. <laughs>